Hey, long time no see. You gave birth? It's gross when an old hag gives birth. I feel bad for the kid. At the hospital where I brought my child, I met the last person I wanted to see. It was my ex-husband Eric. He insulted me just like the old days. Mommy, who's that? Oh, it's nobody. I thought I would never see him again. But here we were, meeting in a place like this. My three-year-old daughter is a child I had with him, but I didn't want her to know who her father was yet. Thanks to divorcing you, I'm doing well as a banker. This hospital has a lot of money in my bank and they are our valued client. I'm in charge of dealing with this hospital, and the director also trusts me. After all, someone as good as me deserves to be in charge of dealing with a major hospital. Even though I didn't ask, he started bragging about how amazing he was. I was not interested in him in the slightest anymore. And how about you? All you could do was earn money, but you've even quit your job. You've always been inefficient. On the other hand, I'm dealing with people you wouldn't even have a chance to meet in your lifetime. It's like you and I live in a different world. You are inefficient. That was Eric's catchphrase. When we got married, I couldn't conceive, so I quit my job to focus on fertility treatment. Looking back, that's when Eric suddenly turned cold and our relationship soured. Even when I finally got pregnant, he said our married life is inefficient and abandoned our child and me. Why did my husband, who used to be kind, turn so cold towards me? I still don't understand. You'll probably be single for the rest of your life. Good luck with your life as a single mother. He kept making fun of me. I was getting really angry. Sorry, but I remarried after divorcing you. I'm pregnant with his child now. I'm much happier than when I was married to you. I'm currently six months pregnant, but because of my slim figure, people around me often don't notice that I'm pregnant. Even my ex-husband didn't seem to have noticed. Seriously? Pregnant again? Have you ever thought about the child's feelings when you have a child at your age? Other kids will say your mom is old like a grandma and tease your child, you know. Don't you feel sorry for them? Your husband, who remarried a woman like you, is stupid. No smart person would marry a divorced, single mother like you. I'd love to see the face of that idiot. I was going to endure it when he was just making fun of me, but I couldn't stand it when he started insulting my husband. Hey, why do you keep mocking people so much? Have I done something to you? I was going to let it slide when you were making fun of me, but I won't let you insult my husband. You don't even know him. We were once married, but now you're a complete stranger to me. I don't care if you're hurt. I'm just stating facts. I retorted against my ex-husband's mockery, but he didn't change his attitude. I can't believe I was married to someone like him. I trembled with anger. It was right after I wondered how to shut him up. Has my wife done something? Taylor. Daddy. My husband, Taylor, showed up. My daughter loves Taylor, who is kind, and she always clings to him whenever he's at home. They look like a real parent and child. I came to the hospital with Taylor for my prenatal checkup. Taylor had to stop by somewhere, so I was waiting in the waiting room first. Is he your ex? Yeah. I just happened to meet him. I thought my ex-husband would change his attitude after Taylor came, but he ended up looking down on us even in front of Taylor. Oh, are you the idiot who remarried this woman? You are wasting your life marrying a divorced, single mother like her. What did you just say? My wife had told me about you before, but you are really rude. You have no right to speak ill of my wife. 
Shall I tell you how inefficient it is to marry her since I was married to her first? Taylor is such a kind person and I have never seen him upset, but he was angry at my ex. Aren't you old enough to know what's right and wrong to say? I'm appalled. However, my ex-husband showed no signs of remorse and did not stop looking down on us. I haven't said anything wrong, I'm just stating facts. But seriously, I feel bad for the child. There is no doubt that kids want a young and beautiful mother. Rebecca is young and beautiful. I won't let you speak ill of my wife any further. Haha. <laughs> young and beautiful? Are you older than her? Maybe that's why you'd say that, but people in general see her as an old lady. You should develop an eye for women. If you want, we can go to do that together. I know a good place. As he made fun of me so much like this, I was at the end of my patience. I wondered why he had to say this much even after we divorced. Stop it. I never want to see your face again. Just go away. People around us noticed our argument, and when I raised my voice, people started to buzz. Director, over here. A nurse, who had heard about the commotion, brought the hospital director. What's going on? I heard that men and a woman were arguing, so I rushed over. Oh, hello, Dr. Ford. I was going to come to see you later. I'm sorry for making you come here. You see, these two complained to me about something so small and tried to pick a fight with me, so I was just lecturing them. Eric greeted the director as if nothing had happened, and lied openly, saying that we were the one who started it. Perhaps he believed that he had the director's trust, and he looked confident. He was the type to fawn over people in power but mercilessly look down on those he considered beneath him. He is pathetic. However, he didn't know who my husband really was. Grandpa. Hey, don't let her call Dr. Ford Grandpa. You should teach her better. She's my granddaughter. There, there. Is it true that you tried to pick a fight with him, Taylor? The director asked my husband as he picked up my daughter. No, absolutely not, Dad. Do you, Dad? Huh? Granddaughter? Even though you come here often, you didn't know about Taylor? He's the future director of this hospital. He's no stranger to you. What? Once Eric discovered that Taylor is the heir of the hospital which is his important client, he started trembling uncontrollably. Before joining us, Taylor had gone to greet his father, who is the hospital director. Following my father-in-law's policy, Taylor works at a different hospital as a doctor to gain experiences. Since there are people around, let's continue in a conference room. After everyone moved to a conference room, my father-in-law asked Taylor and me about the situation. I'll ask again. What was the cause of this trouble? Without a doubt, this person is the cause. He's Rebecca's ex-husband. We happened to meet here today, and he started saying offensive things to Rebecca, such as she is an old lady, and our unborn child is unlucky, dot. What? I had heard about Rebecca's previous marriage from her, but her ex-husband is you? It seems like I was completely fooled by your appearance. No, director. I it's a misunderstanding. There are many things I want to say, but it seems you have no idea about the difficulty of childbirth. I do understand. If you did, you wouldn't think of leaving your wife, who's just gotten pregnant. You were supposed to help her as the child's father. Well, you see, it's not just my fault. We mutually agreed and divorced. Agreed? As I said before, I've heard everything from Rebecca. No matter what you say, it just sounds like excuses. And you haven't even been paying child support, have you? 
That's... Eric's face quickly turned pale. His previous condescending attitude disappeared. As my father-in-law said, Eric hadn't given me any financial support. He even said, I opposed having a child, so I don't have any obligation to pay. I found it ridiculous to rely on such a man and had been managing my life by using the money I saved before I got married. Do you have any idea how much strain a pregnancy puts on a woman's body is special when they have a baby later in their life? Giving birth itself is already very difficult. That's why. I was thinking about Rebecca's well-being, and I was against the idea of having a child. Even this time, I just wanted to advise her not to have a baby. Since she is much older than when she had a baby last time. Right, it was advice. Are you kidding me? I don't want advice from someone like you. It's shocking to hear. Your words and actions didn't show any concern for my wife's well-being. No more excuses. I'm disappointed in you. I've had a good relationship with your bank, but it seems that was a mistake. I'll contact the branch manager about this matter. Please. Wait. I'll be in trouble if you do that." Eric hastily stood up from his chair and started begging my father-in-law. Please. Please don't tell the branch manager. It was the first time I saw someone begging so desperately. And the person who was begging was my ex-husband. Stop that. It's cringeworthy. There's nothing more to discuss. Leave. Never show your face in front of us again. I'm really glad that you and Rebecca got divorced. Please. Please, forgive me. Though Eric kept pleading, we couldn't forgive him for such actions. Perhaps Taylor called them, and two security guards appeared, and forcibly got Eric out of the hospital. I'm sorry for causing trouble. No need to apologize. I never thought that he was your ex-husband. I wish I knew sooner. I'm sorry for making you uncomfortable. No, please don't apologize. Though he hurt my feelings, I felt good, since you and Taylor defended me and taught him a lesson. Thank you very much. I was so happy that I married Taylor. I felt that way from the bottom of my heart. I met Taylor when I was a company employee, visiting his hospital for work-related matters. Although most of our conversations were about work, he always talked to me with a smile and left a very positive impression. Since I was dating my ex-husband at that time, our relationship didn't develop into a romantic relationship. I went to the same hospital for my fertility treatment, so I occasionally saw him. When the divorce with my ex-husband was finalized, Taylor showed more concern than anyone else and said, If you are okay with it, Rebecca, I want to support you. He apparently liked me since the time I was visiting the hospital for work. With Taylor's support, I gave birth to my daughter. I thought his parents will oppose the marriage between Taylor and me, who is a divorcee and even has a child, but apparently his father saw me while I was visiting his hospital for work and he was impressed by my job, and they gave us their blessing. And this year, I discovered I was pregnant with Taylor's child. Because of what happened with Eric when I got pregnant last time, I was nervous when I informed Taylor about the pregnancy, but he was extremely delighted. Though he is busy, he's been taking the lead in household chores since I got pregnant. He is the perfect husband and there is nothing I can complain about. This time, we decided to give birth at my father-in-law's hospital which is close to our home, after discussing with everyone. Since then, I've been preparing for childbirth. I should probably say my family has been preparing everything for me. If I say that I'm not anxious about childbirth, it would be a lie. But, because I have such a reliable family, I feel I can welcome the day of delivery peacefully. One day, less than a month before the due date, I received a message from a familiar number. 
It was my ex-husband's number. Do he still have something to say? Thinking that, I opened the message, and it was a long apology. As I continued reading, feeling suspicious, it mentioned his current situation toward the end. It seems he was demoted due to the incident, and his path to promotion was closed off. At the very end, this happened because of that incident, so please help me out and do something about it. He wrote, I was astonished. There was no doubt it was his own fault. In the end, Eric showed no signs of remorse. It was all for his own protection. I no longer wanted anything to do with Eric, so I decided not to reply to the message and leave it be. Just in case, I told Taylor that I had received a message from Eric. He's truly unbelievable. You don't have to contact him at all. Of course not. However, three days later, when I was taking a walk with my daughter in the neighborhood, Eric suddenly appeared in front of us. Rebecca! Why are you ignoring me? Come on, help me! Why are you here? I'll call the police! Come on, don't do that! Don't make a big deal out of it! I'm here because you've been ignoring me! Please, help me out! If you tell the director that the incident the other day was a misunderstanding, I can surely go back to the branch where I was working originally. Why should I do something so inefficient? It doesn't make sense. I must have taken the words Eric said when we separated. Marriage with you is inefficient. To heart. I never thought the day when I'd say that to Eric would come though. I was just joking the other day. But you took it seriously and made a fuss. A joke? Don't make me laugh. No matter how much I asked you to stop, you didn't. It's a waste of time to talk to you. I'll say it one more time. Helping you is inefficient. Understand? Go home now. What? I am being modest, and you act all high and mighty. Fine, got it. I'll apologize for everything. I don't particularly want you to apologize now. Oh, but there's something I've wanted to ask. Why did you suddenly become cold when we were married? You used to be so kind. I decided to ask the question that had long been on my mind. We didn't have any significant fights or issues. Is it because of the fertility treatment? I'll be honest with you. The reason why I married you was because you had a good income. I wanted to spend the money I earned only on myself. But once we got married, you immediately wanted children, and fertility treatments cost money. Plus, if we had a child, I knew that you'd stop working and wouldn't be able to earn. Essentially, Eric married me for my income. I quit my job for fertility treatment, which led Eric to give up on us. In fact, I earned more than Eric when I had a job. However, I didn't have much attachment to my job, and having a child was more important to me. That's why I quit my job, but it seemed that Eric hated it. That's probably why he wasn't cooperative with the fertility treatment. You married me for money, huh? Well, I had a feeling, but is that the only reason? My husband seemed uncomfortable, avoiding eye contact. It's clear there's more to it. What's wrong? Is there something else? Might as well, tell me everything. I won't get mad. Are you sure? I was actually having an affair. What? An affair? Are you kidding me? You just said you won't get mad at me. This is different. I thought it was a marital issue. I am astonished now. You're truly a hopeless idiot. Well, that's all in the past. I began considering divorce around the same time as I started having an affair. Back then, 
I was preoccupied with fertility treatments and didn't notice Eric's affair at all. Though it's all in the past, this man is truly incorrigible. But you see, since I've been demoted, she dumped me. I don't know what to do anymore. That's none of my business. She is cruel. She apparently only thought of me as an ATM and when we broke up. She said, I don't need an old man like you. Hoof. Huh? What's so funny? Don't you realize? You've called me an old hag and she called you an old man. That's karma. Maybe you thought you wouldn't grow old, but aren't you nearly 40? You're quite the old man. Eric blushed and fell silent. It seemed what I said was spot on. Hopefully, this will make Eric reflect a little. I'm really sorry for what I have done to you. Can't you help me somehow? Eric apologized, but there was no way I can forgive him after he had abandoned me when I was struggling with fertility treatment and neglected his own child. There was no way that I would help him. This kid is my child, right? Okay. If I can return to the branch where I originally worked, I'll pay child support. Stop it. Don't try to act like a father now. Hi, I'm your daddy. He suddenly talked to my daughter, as if he just remembered her, although he's never paid attention to her before. I'm sure that he doesn't even know his daughter's name. Hey. Daddy? My daddy is more handsome than you. More handsome? Ha, kids are honest. W, whatever, your child is as foolish as you. He must have hurt by my daughter's words. His confidence vanished. Anyways, there's nothing I can do for you. I don't need your help now. So can you leave? Eric reluctantly left with his shoulders drooped. After that, I started receiving regular messages from him about his current situation. I didn't reply, but I guess I'm the only person he can talk to. He was relocated to a rural area and he is living alone. His messages describe how unfortunate he is, but I ignore them all. However, it's kind of funny, so I sometimes read them with my husband, chuckling. On the other hand, I gave birth to Taylor's child, a healthy baby boy. I spend peaceful days cherishing happiness with my husband and our children.